Good evening. Good, welcome to the, I'd like to call to order the uh, Miami Township Board of Trustees meeting for January 18th, 2023. Um, we'll be calling the meeting to order at 5.04 p.m. And um, we have a fire chief in attendance and two trustees and our minutes person, no public. Um, so I would like to call for the uh, a motion to adopt the minutes of January 4th. I so move. And I second. Any discussion? I read them pretty thoroughly and I know Chris, Chris added his two cents by email and um, I, I don't see any um, problems. I have one picky thing in the second sentence. Uh, the meeting was called to order by Chairperson Mucher, Mucher, Trustee Hollister and Trustee Moyer also were present or somehow it sounds like although Mucher called it to order just Hollister and Moyer were present. It's just I say picky. Got it. Um, and the other input. Um, so I had nothing else. Okay. Shall we? Been moved in second to adopt the minutes of the January 4th, 2023 meeting as amended. Yes. Uh, Mr. Hollister? Aye. Ms. Moore? Yes. Minutes are approved. Cool. All right, I have another resolution. A motion, I would like to entertain a motion to approve the payment of our bills in the amount of $48,317.68. That's $2,002.97 general fund, fire fund $32,378.03. EMS billing $5,090.84, cemetery $2,023.09, roads and bridges $8,187.40. Do I have a motion to? I so move. You so move and I second. Any discussion on? Nope. And hearing no further discussion, may we call the roll? Uh, so we move in second to approve payments of bills in the amount of forty-eight thousand three seventeen sixty-eight as enumerated. Uh, Mr. Hollister. Yes. Ms. Moyer. Yes. Motion approved. Okay. <coughs> Correspondence we received this week: First Energy Bill Utility Assistance Program, um, and then Lee Sloan, um, our attorney for the Kingwood Project. So we might want to put that on the. Put that in old business. Oh, got it. And multiple Glen Forest inquiries. And I'll, I'll, I know Chris is under the weather and may not have responded, so I'll get with them and make sure those are done. Um, we've been invited to Little Miami Watershed. They're doing um, some kind of anniversary thing. Invite the, um, the River Speaks is the event. Um, receive the MBRPC meeting agenda. Um, Regional Planning Committee, Green County Executive Committee minutes, um, a U.S. Census Bureau. If you get a chance to look at that, um, have a survey that like that's something that we need to respond to. I think so. Yeah, I, I mean they're asking us mm -hmm. to, and I think it would be useful. Um, Green County um, Regional Planning is requesting a copy of um, Chapter. Um, I'll check with Chris, or the new chapter um, 13, the zoning um, update that we did. I'll make sure with, with Richard and Chris if, that, that that was sent to them. Um, Miami Conservancy District survey. I think that was also a survey we could fill out. And yeah, we're not in that district. Well, then I'll check out the email, see why they, they're asking us to do it. Um, township road grant application. So, this time, 
If anybody in the public has anything they'd like to place on the agenda or comment, this would be the time. Seeing none, um, <laughs> we'll go on to the fire department report. Thank you very much. Uh, first order of fire department business is that I misspoke and the room is booked to our work. Thank you. We have the tree committee in town right now. Okay. Doing tree things. Thank mm -hmm. you. I assume doing tree things. Sorry. You never know. Uh, where am I? Okay, so since the last meeting, we've had 31 EMS incidents and seven fire incidents. We finished last year just over 1,200 calls, which is a second time high. Not the first, okay. not the highest, but it's the number, it's the runner up. Okay. Uh, and I'll have more details as we crunch all the numbers and stuff. Um, we have our award rip of the uh, award. Recipients for 2022 were announced at the New Year party on Sunday. So um, we're sending a press release to the Yellow Springs News. So okay. they will be in there. We'll be putting something up on our social media. But uh, they're all the same people who were there before. So <laughs> recruit of the year was Brian Burnett. Firefighter was Justin Turner. And the of the year was Georgia Goad. I can give you a copy of this. So okay. Make yes, your life easier. <laughs> um, Member of the year was Cassidy Brewer, and the Meritorious Service Award went to Lieutenant Klein, Nick Miller, Jacobson, Dave Meister, Peyton Cooper, Georgia Coop, Georgia Goad, and Mark Murphy. For one particular for one particular incident, incident a rollover yeah. crash uh, back in November. Yeah. Uh, I have a mem uh, memo. I, I, know, my I have a resolution for you, 2023-10, which is reclassifying. Uh, a reclassification of MTFR personnel, which would be reclassifying current volunteer, firefighter MT Ryan Burnett, from volunteer status to part-time status, where he will fill um, an overnight night tour, 12-hour uh, on sea shift, which was vacated when Jake Rich left us to go right. to the middle, so. That's awesome. He seems like a great guy, he and he already, he's already won an award. Yeah, he's already won an award. He is one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. I met him for the first time at the party, and um, he that's the impression I got. Yeah, real sweet um, I don't think. Do you have anything else for the fire department before we do this resolution? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Brian, normal spelling. Burnett, B-U-R-N-E-T-T. -T. Mm. Cindy, I think I gave you a copy. Oh, did you give Cindy a copy of this resolution? I did not. But awesome. Thank you, Don. Oh, thank you, Don. Thank you. That's what it's all I need. Though. Cool. Yeah. Everything's good. Okay. Um, do we need a full reading of this? We have it in is the that, past. Is that what Wait, we do? I did have something to say. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, I may have emailed to you this, but uh, just a Just a comment. Uh, when I was out of commission, being transferred from hospital to um, rehab, one of the Kettering Network uh, ambulance guys, when I said I was a township truck, my township trustee, said, "Oh, I just sent my volunteer application. Oh. I hear it's a cool place." Well, that's what I was saying. I don't know if you know anything. This would have been in November. What's the best? Uh, okay. And he wasn't looking for a job. He was wanting to volunteer here. Okay. And it's it's just that somehow uh, Yellow Springs, okay, Miami Township has a, a reputation as a well. It's good to know. A uh, younger man. Yeah. Okay. I'll have to check and see. I. I only have one volunteer application for someone who's not certified. Well, so to see maybe, maybe he hadn't sent it in. Yeah, well, that's possible that or that it went to one of my but, other underlings and they hadn't given it to um, <coughs> so. I was okay. impressed. Nice to hear that. So. Yeah. Again, it, it didn't sound like he was job hunting. He was yeah. just very good. Awesome. Um, all right. Did you guys vote on this? No. Okay. So I entertain a motion to. Do I read this first and then entertain a motion? Sure, read it first. Resolution 2023-10. 
um, whereas the continuing need exists to maintain proper staffing in the fire department. And current volunteer fire fighter EMT Brian Burnett has acquired and demonstrated all the necessary qualifications to serve in the capacity of firefighter EMT for the fire and rescue department in a part-time basis. And whereas Chief Altman has recommended the reclassification of this employee, whereas funds are available for this purpose with the fire department to, to 23 operating budget, budget. Now therefore, be it resolved that Brian Burnett shall be reclassified from volunteer to part-time status for the fire and rescue department effective January 18th, 2023. I entertain a motion to reclassify Brian as part-time. I so move. And I second. Any discussion? Hearing none, may we call the roll? Moved and seconded to adopt resolution 2023-10, reclassification of Miami County Fire and Rescue employee. <clears throat> Mr. Hollister. Yes. Ms. Ms. Moore. Yes. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, just to give you an update on this federal entity registration that I've been banging my head against the wall <laughs> since October. Uh, we finally made a little bit of motion today because Margaret was able to find uh, the biggest problem that we're having right now. Well, one is that the federal government decided to do re-verification of everyone who already had an entity number, which we have had for 10 plus years. So we as a station have an entity number? Yeah, Miami Township has an entity number, which allows us to receive federal funding. Without it, we cannot apply for grants. And technically, like if a disaster were declared, we would not qualify for FEMA funding. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's an important number, and it's, we have to have it, we need to maintain it for the life of our USDA payback. Okay. So, it used to be a really easy process, and I went in and did click, and it was all set. Uh, this year, when I got to the verify the name of your place, it popped up and said the federal government now requires two, basically two-factor verification for an entity who they've already given us five million dollars, but bureaucrats being what they are. So we've, I've been working with uh, contractor federal processing registry to try and overcome these hurdles because I was I couldn't do anything, I was stuck. Um, so we've got. There's two items we need. We've got the first one done. The second one is this, the equivalent of Articles of Incorporation, which we don't have because we're the government. Mm -hmm. So um, right. they just sent me, I just saw an email list of what's acceptable. Uh, I just took a quick glance. I don't know if we have any, I'll work with Margaret on that. Um, otherwise, they're gonna also search um, the Secretary of State database and see if there's anything that refers to us. They need something that has when we started like in, and where we are. Like what state we're in. When, like, when the township started or when the fire department started? Township. Because this is for the township. Well, there's we have some probably scrolls in the other room. <laughs> the historic <laughs> certificate. And and the charter I mean, I think there's got to be something. Um, I also have a letter coming from the IRS that hopefully will help because one yep. thing that would prove who we are is our certificate of tax exemption, but we're a government entity and we're just exempt. There is no, they don't issue oh. finding letters, but they're sending me a letter that says, well, you're the government, we don't issue letters, but you are tax exempt. So hopefully that's gonna help. But what would be amazingly imperative moving forward with this is, and I'll talk with Margaret about this, because we're Miami Township and we've been very whimsical over the years, um, we are registered with the federal government as Miami Township, comma, Green County. That's how they recognize us. So trying to verify that was very difficult because most of our accounts are in wildly different names. Miami Township Trustees, Trustees of Miami Township, Miami Township Board of Trustees, Miami Township Green County, Chris Muger of Miami Township. Um, so I, I think it would behoove us, because this is going to come up again in two years, uh, that we work to change all our accounts to a standard name, mm -hmm. uh, so that when we are crashing, which what? is the standard name. Well, I mean, what the federal government has us as is Miami Township, Common Green County, which That's makes sense. And we have a couple of uh, bills already coming under that account name. We could change it to something else, but that would add two more steps to this process because then we have to change it to the federal government side. Okay. So, okay. Um, so I, I can, I'll work with Margaret on that because I assume that falls into her 
Yes. Are we on? Yes, I thank you for that. Uh, so and for, and for handling all this stuff. Yes, what a nightmare. Um, and then last but not least, our staff update. So uh, I told you last time, Lieutenant Pauletti had knee surgery. Um, so he's expected, hopefully, to return to light duty by mid-February. And then we're not sure how much time he had to spend on light duty okay. um, before he returns to the full shift. And then Casey Brewer, who had been out, has been cleared by his physician for full duty. So, What is light duty? Uh, light duty would be administrative tasks. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I mean, instead of working a 24-hour shift, he'd go to an eight-hour, mm -hmm. probably Monday through Friday, just whatever we need him to do. Um, so. okay. And is that, that is it. That is it. Yeah. Cool. Um, do we still have any remnants of the Explorer Scouts? We do not currently. Um, are, we are working on re-chartering with the Boy Scouts. Um, the problem has been on the Boy Scout side that uh, between staff turnover and their legal woes as an organization, um, we haven't been able to get any traction on rechartering with the with Learning for Life. Um, uh, Nate's working on that project. Even if we're not even able to currently, so we can get that going. What was the most that were ever involved at one time? Our highest number was 15. Wow. Yeah, at one point we had 15 younglings with us, of which we still have one, Nick Miller Jacobson, who was in there. At one point there were two, and then one guy Co did a similar program in Beaver Creek. Yeah, yeah, we've got, um, I mean, currently we've got three, four members on who were Explorer Scouts. Oh, okay, I thought you just said. So we've got Nick from that one group of 15. Mm -hmm. Uh, Gavin and Peyton, Gavin the Van Meter and Peyton Cooper, and then Casey Brewer, who was actually was an explorer with us as well, even though he lives in West Carrington. Mm -hmm. came, came here to explore. So uh, we're, um, we want to get it going again. One of the things that the Governor's Task Force on Volunteer Fire Service has identified is as a good pipeline for volunteer departments. So our explorer programs, cadet programs, whatever you want to call them. Uh, you know, as best we can, we'll stay with the explore with exploring because they come with liability protection for us and our staff. Versus just running your own program, which can run into some potential problems. Anything else for fire department, fire and EMS? Excuse me. Okay. Um, cemetery road report. Um, I rode the roads and they looked good. I've only been doing this for a couple months, two or three months, and I think it's good I got started this time of year. There's no wild things growing or um, bad snowstorms. Everything looked great. Dan's not here. He's assisting the fire department waiting on a thing, waiting on a delivery, so we'll have to. Um, I don't think he, <clears throat> no, he doesn't use send us a report, so moving on to Fiscal officer's report, she has an amendment for temporary appropriations. Uh, whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township. Now, therefore, the trustees authorize amendments to the following temporary appropriations. General fund, increased by 1,000. Fire fund, um, contracted service increased by 1,000. Um, building fund increased by 1,000. EMS billing, um, contracted service increased by four thousand. Um, do I hear? A, I so move. You so move, and I second. Any discussion? Nope. Hearing none, shall we vote? We moved and seconded to adopt resolution 2023-09, amendment of temporary appropriations as enumerated. Uh, Mr. Hollister. Yes. Ms. Moyer. Yes. Resolution approved. Um, okay. Standing committee reports. Are we doing an advancement of tax settlement? Money authorization. Um, I had that under new business. Okay. But I, I suppose we could do it under um, 
fiscal officer's report. Um, Why not? Because um, that the copy I have does not have a date on it. Um, there's, a, here there's a date before the signature, and here there is not. These are two different ones. Right. So oh, I'm yeah, got it. saying that um, in passing that, we So we is, sure. it, is it right and proper to write in a date? Sure. Cindy, in your experience? As, as long as it's okay. when it's signed by the appropriate okay. people. Sure. January. Eighteenth, 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 two thousand twenty-three. Oh, Genesis. 16. Well, I changed it. So All right. <laughs> it's these two-day holiday things. Then January eighteenth. Okay. Whereas it is imperative to meet the payroll of the Miami Township Fire and Rescue, and whereas the voters of Miami Township responded to the urgent need to increase the funding of the payroll and associated personnel costs of the MTFR by approving a 3.5 mil additional tax levy, therefore the Miami Township Board of Trustees authorized the fiscal officer to seek advancement of tax settlement monies as allowed under Section 118.24 of the Ohio Revised Code. The Miami Township Trustees authorize the fiscal officer to do so immediately. I so move. And I second. Any discussion? Only a comment that in the transition to uh, more and more professional uh, firefighters and EMPs, I'm reminded that it was in the 1960s we still have volunteer police uh -huh. in Yellow Springs. Wow. <laughs> now, they may not have had full arrest yeah. authority, but they went on patrol. It was a big deal, and that was eliminated. <laughs> we called them auxiliary officers. Pardon? We called them auxiliary officers. Auxiliary, excuse me. Yes. Um, shall we call the roll? Uh, it's been moved and seconded to adopt resolution 2023-07, advancement of tax settlement money authorizations. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Resolution adopted. I wrote this and I called myself Mr. Moyer. <laughs> <laughs> well, we... But I bet you my computer corrected me. Uh -huh. That one's got a date on it. Cool. Thank you. All right. Standing committees. I'll start with MBRPC. That we had our um, our month board of directors meeting, and it was all about. It's very interesting. Is about aging in the in the county or in in the Miami Valley. Aging. What they had they called it. Um, one of those things about, and it was all about engaging um, services, but also people are living longer and they want, um, and how to fit yourself into jobs and volunteer positions and even paid positions, um, fortify the workforce and a lot of the, um, a lot of the um, positions that are open now because of worker shortages. Um, there was a lot, but that, there was, the whole meeting was dedicated to that one presenter to another. That's what we did. So there was no, no business done, particularly there. And Chris is not here for Green County Regional Planning. Um, Clifton Union Cemetery done? We have not met. Um, Development Corporation. We had a monthly meeting, I guess, our next meeting will be our organization meeting, uh, but we voted, that is our annual organization meeting, uh, we did vote to uh, accept the, an offer by the um, Community Foundation 
to assign one of their encore, or to have an encore fellow position that would be uh, a, in, a, in effect, executive director, I'm not sure what title we're using, on a interim basis, uh, two or three months with, at the, at the end of that we will hire a full-time normal executive director uh, or other title perhaps. Uh, and that's a big move. So that's the first you've had a paid director. You, you will have had a paid director on that. That's, uh, and this is that's big. And it's very, it's made possible by the foundation mm -hmm. underwriting the cost well, initially. CASP, the Climate Action Sustainability Project, there's a lot going on with it. We did it's intensive interviews for a half-time position that's being funded by, so far, just by the village for a six-month um, half-time coordinator. Um, there are things I could get into, including, um, that I won't because Chris isn't here. Um, we've been get, we, we were contacted May, may I remind people that this is um, this is a, a collaborative group, including the township, the village, my Tecumseh Land Trust, the Habitat people, the Glen. I'm probably missing some agrarian. Um, we were approached by um, an engineering firm who would. Well, I'm not going to get into it now. I'll talk to the trustees separately about it. It's um. Actually, I will. It is a um, watershed, uh, it's called a NIPSIS. It's a watershed plan and assessment for our Yellow Springs watershed. And it's, people are doing it all over. Um, so and it, is, it is an assessment that is the basis for, that, that is required if you want to apply for any um, 319 grants from the federal government to, to, to do any kind of remediation or riparian buffers or, and it's specifically for non-point source um, uh, pollution or nutrient feed into the, into the rivers, which um, is agriculture and mostly mm -hmm. city streets and stuff. So it's, it's we're looking into it and, um, and it, like I said, it is a foundational document then to be to apply for grants from some of the new infrastructure bills that are coming into effect. So that, that's going on, and also um, the group hopes to host a series of um, collaborative learning, is what they're calling it. They, they're interested in um, land use issues, like we talked about at the meeting last night, where. Um, we could hopefully follow the model of our solar hearing and have township and village people hear each other on um, land use issues, such as big solar, small solar, minimum mm -hmm. lot sizes, um, creative ventures in the township. Just, And I see it as um, really starting to educate the public. It's useful because we're going to be doing our, our um, long-range comprehensive plan you know, we're going to be revisiting that, and, and I've spoken with Green County, and they emphasize it has to be public driven. Now you've jumped from Climate Action Sustainability Project, you started to merge it with uh, Township Zoning. I mean, they, they, they're, I see that they're closely related. Well, to the extent that we're going to have a long-range comprehensive plan that is public, publicly driven, right. or driven by the public, we, we need to have an educated public. I agree. So that's, that's the idea. Yeah. Well, maybe that... When you started to say comprehensive plan, you didn't say that it was township uh, planning. Okay. Thank you for pointing that out. So that, that's a lot. There's a, and I'll, um, I'll be talking with you and Chris more about it. What they 
what's going on with that group. Mm -hmm. And Natural Burial Committee. Um, Can I just add something? Yeah, yeah totally. Your group might like, uh, I don't know if it's still going on, but there used to be a Wright State research project uh, testing water above and in the Yellow Springs Creek, above and below where the village sewer plant releases its mm -hmm. clean water. And so that's also a source of nutrients. Yeah. Um, Thank you for that. And opinion. you got to wonder where the records are of that. Yeah. Maybe, does the village keep them? Is, is the person who led that research at Wright State still around? Someone probably remembers. Yeah. Uh, Anything else? Natural Burial Committee, we met in this very room, and it was very good. And um, we're moving ahead. I think I spoke of some of the things we're moving ahead with. We don't have anything to ask this week of the, the, the Township Trustees. Um, ordering prairie seed and things like that. So fill in disturbed places and, and crunch it through places where invasives are taking hold, but that's it. Um, but the, the people came back. It's our second quarterly meeting and, and, our, and our people are still interested. So that's good. That's specifically for the prairie. Um, new business. Um, no one has anything else for new business. Oh, we, we added, we already did that. We added our new business to Mar Mar Margaret's thing, so. Old business. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, the... Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, this was going... Boyd Township's attorney. Yeah, this came... Yeah, this came... Chris, Chris notified me of this before the meeting started. Um, this is simply um, our legal counsel that we had, if you'll remember, at the, at the beginning of last year, we, we had we retained private legal counsel from Columbus, um, in addition to the legal counsel we have with the prosecutor's office. And um, they have asked us, they, they informed us of their fee increases and asked that we pass a, a um, proper resolution to, uh, to retain them for another year. And um, it's a long read, um, but I'll do it. Um, whereas the Miami Township Board of Trustees is authorized by the revised code to employ attorneys on an annual basis, other than prosecuting attorney at the township officers and boards and commissions of official capacities and advise them on legal matters. And whereas it states the, the Ohio revised code which allows this, um, Whereas the board finds it necessary to appoint attorneys to counsel and represent township on an annual basis for the calendar year 2023 in such matters as the board or its designee may refer to them. Um, whereas the board appropriated the sum of $2,500 for legal services in 2023, now will therefore let it be resolved by the Board of Township Trustees of Miami Township, Green County, that um, Rossius Johnson and Griggs LLC be hereby employed on an annual basis for the calendar of 2023 as the township's legal counsel to represent the township and its officers, its boards and commissions in their official capacities and to advise them in connection with such matters as may be referred to by said, to said council by or on behalf of the board or its designee. Um, you'll remember that we used them for the BZA hearings and that was very useful, I just an aside. Um, the compensation for such counsel in 2023 shall be paid as follows, $185 per hour attorney time, $107 per hour for clerk time, $95.75 per hour for legal assistant time, plus out-of-pocket expenses, reimbursements provided. That the total compensation shall not exceed $5,000 without further action by the board. Um, the attorneys may be discharged at any time by the majority of the board vote. 
Township Fiscal Officer is directed to send a copy of this resolution, resolution to the law firm. Um, yada, yada, yada. It is found and determined that all formal actions of the board concerning and relating to the passage of this resolution were taken in an open meeting of the board and that all deliberation of this board and any of its committees that resulted in such formal actions were in meetings open to the public in compliance with all legal requirements, including, without limitation, section 121.22 of the revised code. And I think, Cindy, that's the one I should <laughs> refer to as per our conversation earlier. Okay. Um, this resolution shall take effect and be enforced from and after the date of its adoption. I so move. I second. And Thank you. Ask for clarification. Yes. Uh, whereas the board has appointed the sum of twenty five hundred for legal services for twenty twenty three, it's already been um, appropriated for this year. Or should that be twenty two? And it's changing now for twenty three to the new amount. Actually. It, there's some I, contradiction I, here in the 2500 and then 5000 That's my question. Yeah. Was the 2500 what was, it, what was it Actually, appropriate in 22? Now that I think about it, and, and Chris is, uh, he has asked me to strike that from there, the um, the, 20, the appropriation. Of that, 20, entire, of 20, that entire that we're entire at should be struck. Yeah, does that make it work? I move that we amend this to delete uh, the sentence, whereas, or the section, whereas the board is appropriating. 2,500. I second that. Moved and seconded to delete the whereas statement as noted. Um, Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Meyer? I think, yes. That section is deleted. And <coughs> thank you guys for your sharp eyes. And and then there was a motion from Mr. Hollister to adopt the resolution and seconded by Ms. Moyer. Correct. Um, Mr. Hollister? Yes. And Ms. Moyer? Yes. And the resolution was adopted. Okay. Yes. Hey. Um, old business, in which order should we do the solar in the township update? Um, How about if we do Kingwood Solar King first, because that's first. less, okay. I think will be shorter. Yeah, okay. I think that will be shorter. Uh, you may recall that we joined, well, has this happened since the last meeting? Um, I <clears throat> Miami Township joined with the other townships in endorsing uh, Citizens for Green Acres uh, appeal of the, uh, it's not appeal, but we filed uh, with the Power Siding Board uh, for Citizens for Green Acres. We agreed with their action uh, to it, the power siding board in rejecting Kingwood's proposal rejected it on the basis of public opposition. It didn't reject it on the basis of technical problems. And Citizens for Green Acres in order to uh, allow for um, future broader argument, if need be, if this goes to the Supreme Court, uh, challenged uh, on the basis of technical problems, uh, that if it wasn't enough to reject this just because there was unified political opposition. Uh, and we joined in that argument, uh, or in that uh, appeal. Uh, 
Saturday, Kingwood um, appealed the uh, rejection on the basis of um, unified public opposition, and we haven't read. I haven't read their uh, appeal. Power Siding Board, uh, I guess, I don't know if it's ten, 10 days from now, uh, there can be comment uh, within the next 10 days uh, on Kingwood's appeal. And Cedarville Township today asked, uh, they advocate that the townships make our own statement to the Power Siding Board separate from Citizen for Green Acres. Uh, so we're in a time crunch of 10 days. Um, and that will, this is beyond our original legal agreement with, with that is re retaining legal counsel agreement with Lee Sloan. Uh, so if we were to go with the other townships, and Xenia Township, secondhand, I've been told by Jeff Uri of Cedarville Township, um, they anticipate that they would just agree with whatever we write, with, with our action. So Cedarville, I they don't Zena want to pay for that, an attorney. Zena is not going to go the distance and um, they'll just want to back us. If if we, us being the other townships, um, so I, whatever we do, this will require another special meeting, okay, uh, to approve if we do anything, um, and. The, uh, Lee Sloan's email just says we need to discuss uh, if I'm going to help you on this uh, it's going to cost you more money we will discuss um, and just as what we just approved the, the rate um, for our re retaining the what's the name of the company Greg's Ambrosius uh, Briggs and Brosius, they're about, the price they're offering is about half normal price for, uh, Lee Sloan has, has been charging similar prices, like $175 an hour instead of $300. So, so we have two decisions to make. But, uh, so we would need to approve retaining him, and I'm not suggesting we do that tonight. I'm and we would need to approve a document that he writes, uh, or that the other township, it's possible to just use Cedarville Township's uh, attorney. But in the background of this is we ended up, we only spent 21,000. Xenia Townships had over 50,000 on legal uh, counsel. Uh, and Uh, Lee Sloan did a lot of work after that 21 test. Okay. Uh, um. Now, in those 10 days, we are also having a conference, Ohio Township Association conference, will be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of next week. So, if we have a special meeting, uh, it might be we do it beforehand. Today is Wednesday. We'll be going to the next Wednesday. Perhaps Chris will be available by the weekend. To, we can make a decision about, I mean, if we want to stay the course and be strong with this um, mm -hmm. case. Um, uh, should I go ahead? What should I say to 
Cedarville, just in open discussion. By open, I mean still informal discussion. Well, is it possible that with Lee Sloan, we could say Lee Sloan, give him the go ahead to to prepare this one document and then talk about retainers or? Is it pretty much we got to make a we got to make a decision where we keep him on retainer, and if so, then we go ahead with this document. Although, because if uh, I, no, I, I don't. I, I think I don't think we would need to agree on a retainer before he would do anything. Uh, but the main thing is, do we want to go any further? Do we want to do it. I mean, the simplest thing would be just what I did on previous authority agree with citizens for green acres. So we, we, may, we don't have to pay for anything, do anything. It's I just don't know that Cedarville it's... Township has suggested it would be stronger if we acted. Well, I think this is a heck of a time to drop the ball. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've, it's been a heroic effort to get this far. They're, they're, t they're appealing um, I trust Cedarville's judgment because they're very sharp folks. They've sort of led the whole thing. And, um, and they've led it, they've put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into it, and they're asking us for our support, I would say at least for this next, uh, this next, well, whatever this is, you call it an appeal, I don't think it's, it's a, um, what do they call yeah, it? Yeah, they're, 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 they're they, they, we got two things, uh, application for rehearing, I don't know, from, well, anyway, that's something else, but no. Um, well, this document will be commenting on Kingwood's application for appeal. appeal. So why why did the why does the Green County Commissioners have an application for rehearing? They, they he also sent that to us. They, they sent us the Kingwood application for rehearing and the Green County application for rehearing. Well. This is why we need a special meeting. Yeah. Because I have not to meet this came in today and I haven't read it. Yeah, it came in today. There's two documents. So yeah. And maybe another conversation with our cohorts in the other townships. Uh let's see, today is I think we should just go ahead and call a special meeting on Friday. Friday, I think Chris Chris and is if we, well, if we, we should do it by tele I mean we, it will be a, a meeting, uh, well, I was, was going to say without action, but it, it will involve action. Okay. Uh, a meeting to decide or not uh, on our participation in this next filing that's due in 10 days. Yeah. Okay, I'll check with Chris and um, if, if he's not ready to leave by Friday, perhaps the weekend? That is, he's sick. He's sick. <laughs> he's feeling well, but he's still a little under the weather. Um, okay. S special meeting shall happen. Um, so in the township, what did I mean by that? Um, I did, we, last meeting we discussed, you know, was it, we said you had brought up the um, requesting for restriction township wide and Chris had made the point that there is this 90 day period now that um, if, if any application is put forth in our township, the, uh, the company applying before they can, 90 days before they submit an application, they have to let know every township know that they're going to do it, they need to let Green County know, and then Green County commissioners have to hold a hearing, and they have to hear from the townships, and, and, um, and I, I questioned of whether that was enough protection for mm -hmm. us. Um, you said you were going to check SB 52, I asked. Um, I, so, I agree, can, Chris was right. What I, uh, I was referring to a bill that was later amended, and it was House Bill 118. Okay. Uh, 
and I will verify that um, Kevin DeWine, who was at the meeting last night, was very knowledgeable, and he said he confirmed that the uh, that 90 days was a lot of protection, and that he said I will send you the evidence, the legislative evidence of that this afternoon. And right before I was coming here, he said sent, and um, it's waiting. It's awaiting me in my mailbox. So I will verify so, that for us. We uh, probably ought to say what you were referring to about. I mean, we went to two meetings last night. Yeah. The um, uh, a Xenia Zen Solar Open House at Xenia. It wasn't sponsored by the Xenia Township, but at their meeting room. Uh, Samsung Corporation uh, has a proposed, it was a 190 acre? 120 acre. Um, 30 megawatt, 120 yeah, acre? Uh, solar proposal, solar installation east of Xenia. Uh, and the interest that I had in uh, Maryland was, so this is a smaller solar project. Uh, how is Xenia Township managing that? You know, what are the, what's their zoning code say? Uh, and so this was a step in just going to that open house and getting some data. It was a step in the direction of uh, what we might do. Yeah, I had not how we might yeah. handle a similar proposal. I hadn't anticipated that um, these uh, solar companies were going to come in with with um, projects that size, that small. I, I, it didn't, I didn't imagine that they'd come in with a 30, 30 megawatt because we haven't seen that yet. So far it's, it's been gigantic, but this is the start of smaller projects. And um, it's very interesting because they, I, I asked them if they still need to have access to transmission lines, and they do, um, the, the high voltage lines, even the small ones. And, but that they could go three to five miles outside from distance away. So. So far, our zoning commission has indicated that there, there is no room for commercial solar in, um, according to our zoning code. And the plot thickens and continues because we're and learning as we go. Yesterday, or not yesterday, after going to Xenia, uh, the zoning commission Miami Township Zoning Commission met and had invited the Board of Zoning Appeals uh, to come and have a, I would call it sort of a restart meeting. You know, with, um, the, the two entities uh, have very different responsibilities and in our zoning inspector, um, Richard Zoff pointed out, and gave one example, and I forget what township it was, it's not in Greene County, where there's just a standing opposition between the Zoning Commission and the Board of Zoning Appeals. The Board of Zoning Appeals just routinely allows stuff that the Zoning Commission has explicitly banned in the Zoning Code. And so the idea is let's talk and not evolve into that extreme. Um, yes, the, the zoning stay for the whole the meeting, zoning, but I was impressed. I was. The zoning commission would love if the PCA agreed with them on everything. <laughs> I was impressed with the discussion. And yeah, it was. It, I had a great time. I liked meeting everybody. I thought it was a good meeting. And, it well. and we had a couple of guests. Um, Steve Weir came and joined us, and uh, somebody from Agraria came and joined us. So that was nice. It will be, it'll be worth reading those minutes. In a couple minutes, in a couple months, you can. <laughs> um, I don't have any more business today. Any members of the public? No. Nope. Okay. And how do I miss it? Um, 
I entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. I so move. And I second. And by acclamation, we are adjourned. We skip the vote. <laughs>